When two hooligans race on a public road with tragic consequences, the media often mistakenly reports this as drag racing. But drag racing is something totally different. It's an organised sport held on dedicated racetracks under strict safety regulations. Tracks in most states run meetings for street cars to race in a safe environment and street racing is definitely frowned upon by the sport. Most race teams are family affairs and the typical audience contains mum, dad and their children watching their sport in an alcohol-free atmosphere and there is even a junior dragster class for boys and girls aged between 8 and 16. Today, drag racing is one of the most popular forms of motorsport in Australia. One of the most competitive forms of racing is the top alcohol class, where mainly long, sleek, alcohol-burning dragsters race against much shorter, funny cars. One such team is that of father and son, Steve and Aaron Hambridge from the Camden area. They started racing only a few years ago, but in that time they've won two major national events. Steve and Aaron are living proof that it's not how much money you have to spend, but rather how you spend it. Yeah, you don't have to have the quarter of a million dollar race car transporter, which we don't. The first meeting we won, we won it out of the back of our Mitsubishi truck, which we'd only finished a few weeks before. When I say finished, it carried the car there. It was a truck, there was nothing in it. Um, we just had a, a, one of those easy up shade things for, for an awning and we rolled our toolboxes out and our spare parts were all packed in cardboard boxes in the, tra in the truck and we won the event. And uh, you know, even, even still now, yeah, we have a nice semi-trailer and, and it's got a, a small little lounge area with a, a small kitchen and stuff in it, but compared to the other trails in the pits, it's, uh, it's, not, it's not the best thing there. It's nice and it's neat and it's tidy and it's functional, but you're not there to race trailers. You're not there to, you know, we borrow a truck still to tow our to tow our trailer around. We're not uh, we don't own a truck, and you know, I if you look at my car, the thing's painted matte black. Why? Well, I'll be honest, I don't have the money to put a really trick, nice, fancy paint job on it as much as I'd love to. Even though I don't know, I really like the matte black look. It kind of looks fast. <laughs> I don't know if I'd even change it if I could, but um, but yeah, we we. But when it comes to the car, I look pretty much like to think we have the best car in the country and we go to the start line with everything, every bit as good as anyone else has. We just might not have two or three spare engines in a trailer. We, you know, we have what we have and we have to work a little bit harder sometimes to make our parts work. But, um, but yeah, you can, you can be on a budget, you just gotta know where you can and can't take money from to, to make it happen. So. A good front running car with the latest model equipment used, so I say a season old, it's going to cost you about $150,000 to $160,000 Australian. Um, just for an example, we just sold one of our engines out of our car complete for $70,000 Australian. But I would, I reckon every event probably costs eight to $10,000 without major breakage. So if you have a major breakage, that could cost you another twenty without a problem. Um, just uh, that's a lot of the cost that most people don't look at. I spent a thousand dollars to feed myself and my pit crew all weekend for four days for to eight to ten people. Day. Yeah, yeah so. fuel will go through a two hundred litre drum in fuel, of fuel in a weekend. There goes three hundred dollars. Uh, oil, you'll spend one hundred and fifty dollars in oil in a weekend. Uh, Easy. Yeah. Spark plugs, something simple like spark plugs. If I don't spend three hundred dollars a weekend on spark plugs, uh, wear and tear in the car. Uh, you don't have to replace parts all the time, but yeah, like I said, a Conrad's inside the engine uh, will cost you $2,400 and you can make 20 runs on them. So if you divide that, it's, you know, it's sort of, uh, you, you, the thing costs you money each time you run it because things do wear out. So you're not constantly replacing parts, but they do have a life cycle and each time you run it, it costs you X amount of dollars. So. Just glanced over at my wife Carol in the background there, she's shaking her head. <laughs> So we were um, buying an engine off a of pretty much the most successful top alcohol team in America at the time. They were switching categories. And um, I ran up and talked to them and just didn't even have the faintest idea that we were gonna buy a car. I just happened to say, I said, what are you doing with the car? And he said, it's for sale, would you be interested? And I didn't really have the money. And I said, oh, well, how much, what are you asking? And when he told me the price, I nearly fell over. It was probably, half of what it was really worth. They just wanted to get out, get the stuff, move it on. And um, so a bit of wheeling and dealing and a bit of begging and borrowing and 
uh, pleading with the with the wife, and we got the money together, and um, yeah, we we flew out probably a month later, and um, went and bought the car. So it went together really good. The, everything went together fine. We didn't really come across any major difficulties. Everything fit in okay. We wired it up. We plumbed it. Um, everything went together okay. The probably the major. I wouldn't even call it. It wasn't so much a problem. It was just a shortage of time. Me, Dad and two of my crew guys worked non-stop on the car all day and basically finished it 10 minutes before we were due to tow out. And, uh, we finished it and we towed through to weigh the car. Yeah, we weighed it. towed round to Straight the into the staging lanes. <laughs> and I jumped in and then we went out and we made some laps and it was, it was not an issue. The car was fine. It did everything it was meant to do. And I think I made a short pass on the first run yeah. uh, just, to, just to shake it down and check, make sure everything was okay. For our first outing, especially with the lack of sleep that we'd all had, well, that was pretty good. <laughs> yeah, it was good. This is uh, this is the, the trophy you get for winning a, a national event or a championship in Australia. Drag racing, they're um, they're pretty prized possession. I've, I've got two so far, so I'm pretty happy to that. Um, my mum thinks it's a stand for a jewellery. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, yeah. As you can expect. Yeah, yeah, so the money and the time and effort that went into uh, getting my mum a stand for a jewellery, I oh, hope she liked it. But, no, it's, uh, they're pretty prized possession and not many people have a whole lot of them. Um, so yeah, for us to be running in the short period of time that we have and with the limited uh, experience and funds and whatnot that we, that we run, to have a couple of these now is pretty cool. And to have one with the Winter Nationals written on the front of it, is, yeah, it's a pretty big achievement. So there are guys that have won national events, but not many people have won a Winter Nationals. And, yeah, it's pretty cool. Pretty good feeling. So.